Welcome back to another amazing week with another amazing guest on Leading Our Own Way. Today, I had the honor of interviewing. It wasn't, you know what? It actually wasn't an interview. It was a conversation. I spoke to Kenny J. Wilkins about two weeks ago for the first time. We had an amazing pre-chat for hours. And uh, he took a lot of time out of his day to spend with me. But this is Kenny J. Wilkins, uh, an amazing singer and artist songwriter, musician, keyboard (laughs) fixer-upper. You'll find out in the episode. He has uh, been on a bit of a journey. Um, He lost his wife uh, just over a year ago. Um, But, you know, he shares so much light about his journey from childhood growing up in New Jersey, um, just outside of New York in the United States. He now lives in the South, and he talks about his father and his childhood and where he got his gift as music from. We talk about his albums and his music and the the love that it's all about empowering women. His music is all about love and empowering women. That's really the positive mission uh, mission and message he's trying to portray to the world. He's a, he articulates himself so well, a great chat. We dig deep on his personal struggles and how he's persevered and, built his resilience and uh um yeah it's just a great episode a great chat so stay tuned and um yeah have a great great listen and make sure you tune in and go on to apple and spotify and not just follow this show but follow kenny j wilkins as well because we'll be right back with kenny welcome to leading our own way I'm your host, Andrew White, and this is the podcast that unveils captivating narratives of resilience and personal triumph. This podcast is for anyone seeking inspiration and insights on overcoming life's challenges. Follow and subscribe, and then we can lead together forever. Welcome, Kenny, to Leading Our Own Way. How are you today, mate? Nah, I'm pretty good, man. How about yourself? Ah, I am fantastic. Um, Wonderful. Right. Right in front of us, we have the one, the only, Kenny J. Wilkins. Ah, uh, salute to everybody. Good morning or wherever you are in the world, however that works out for you. <laughs> <laughs> you know, on that note, I have to uh, I have to say thank you for getting up. Uh, you, I mean, I know you get up a pretty, you, you know, get, you've been up probably for a while, but it is 8 a.m. Yeah. where you are and it's 10 p.m. where mm, I am. It is, it is. So I have my cup of joe, Andrew, my boy here is about to... Lay it down after a couple of minutes. <laughs> so that's good. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome, man. No, I yeah. really appreciate you uh, joining me on my own journey. And I know mm. we're going to share your journey today. Mm. And um, since we've met, I've been mm. listening to some of your music. And it's yeah. absolutely amazing. And I uh, had you. it pumping in the can. But I was, you know what? You know what, mm. though? When I was listening to your most recent song, I was mm. really proud that I'm the one who's got you on my podcast. Also. Listen here. Listen here, it's a phenomenal thing. You are absolutely professional at everything that you do, and I have to appreciate it, you know, from everything, from your production, from, you know, you put a lot of work into it. So, man, congratulations. Thank you so much for getting me on. It's a pleasure to be here with you, man, for sure. Ah, mate, means the world to me. Absolutely yeah. means the world to me. Um, So, well, I, I normally start off uh, the episodes, Kenny, by um, where I always ask the guests, I like to say it's a bit of a cliche. I want Mm. it to be a cliche. Mm. Um, How are you leading your own way today? I'm leading my own way by choosing how that looks for me. So I'm not necessarily worried about anybody and what their opinion is of what I'm doing. Leading my own way is kind of actually treading the steps that I want to want to make in my life. I'm doing them on purpose and I'm, and I'm enjoying them. You know, sometimes in many cases, you know, we decide that we're not, but well, we're going to listen to everybody else around us instead of ourselves. Leading your own way is absolutely going to be intentional and you're going to do it on purpose. So today, right now, this second, I am leading my own way by doing exactly what I feel in my heart that is right. And whoever doesn't like it, ah, not my problem. I'm leading my own way. How about that? Oh, it's beautiful. <laughs> and it, But for you to say that, it kind of sounds yeah. like... You've had people, have, have you had people uh, judge you, uh, cross mm-hmm. you? Mm-hmm. Yeah? Yeah, huh? of course. Well, most times um, um, people have a definition, they have a desire, they have a way about them that tries to kind of indirectly move you in directions that they feel is right for you. The problem with that is, in many cases, is nobody knows the intricate details of what you go through personally by yourself. So you can never be authored by anybody else's pen. 
you have to decide how that's going to look for you. I'm a, a trailblazer in my mind by myself. I don't need anybody necessarily to encourage me. I appreciate all the encouragement. But when you're leading your own way, it's going to absolutely be important that you walk into a direction that you think you should go. And um, in many cases, you know, such as I and many of the situations that I've been through in the past year, you know, some people will try to dictate how long you do this, <laughs> why you shouldn't do that or what you do here and what you do. There. I mean, I, I, I think or I, I would want to believe that I want to trend set what my life looks like. And I'm not doing it for anybody to pay attention to it. Um, I believe I have the grace for my life and I live it according to what I think and whatever boundaries that I set on my life and how I get those processed and done. It's going to be something that I do myself. Of course, you know, you would want people in your corner um, that's going to help push you in certain directions, um, which are great. But it, it, the grand scheme of things is you have that right. You have to choose you. And you have to be the one to walk in those shoes, nobody else. Yeah. Yeah, so true. And and, and the journey that you've been on, have you noticed so that those people of encouragement, uh, but then kind of just filter off and, and not been on being able to carry on on that journey with you? Mm -hmm. Well, you have to choose it um, because some people will think they just have the right to, to decide how that looks for you. So yeah. you have to not be disrespectful, but in your own way, just be like, mm, yeah, I appreciate that I mean, with love. I'm still going to have to go in the direction that I see fit for my life. You know, you have to live your life. Yeah. You, not anybody else. You have to decide how that looks for you, not for anybody else. And I know sometimes people get agitated and frustrated because people don't decide to listen to them. But you can take wise counsel. You can understand what, what the direction and hopefully that they're giving it to you in the right direction and the right love. But ultimately, you decide how that looks, not anybody else. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I I feel like I've only reached that mindset in in the most recent years of my life, mm. and I'm forty years old. Mm. Um, you're forty six, Four, is that right? Forty eight. Forty eight. I mean, you're yes. younger than me. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but when, when did you? When did that happen for you? When did that clicking moment happen for you to have this mindset? Uh, I I can't remember exactly what the the time was and how even old I was, but. Mm. You know, sometimes um, in 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 life, you see how people choose to be there or not. And um, sometimes people can, I, I don't want to necessarily use this term, but sometimes people will bully you into an emotional uh, way to, to live a life based on how they did it. And it didn't work for them. And it didn't do this for them. And it didn't do this for that. And sometimes... It, their support of you is going to be motivated on whether things work for them or not. Um, and at a certain point in my life, I can't even remember what it was. I decided it did not work until I decided that I was going to kind of move into a direction, you know, that was for me. And I'll, I'll add this. Um, as I was younger coming up, I always kind of felt like I wanted to be included in something. And as time progressed, it's like um, people don't want you involved to a certain degree. So this is what my mantra was at that time. Create lanes, create atmospheres that you set. I used to tell my son that, you know, sometimes um, you have to create an environment around you that you want. You know what I mean? And however those boundaries are, however that life you want to live, you create those for yourself. Well, sometimes you cannot go in other folks' or other people's environments and think that that's going to work for you 100% because most times it doesn't. You have to create that lane. You have to decide how that's going to work for you. When you do, you'll see a change because I was always wanted to be included in something. You know, I, I felt that I had a lot of gifts, a lot of talents. And um, sometimes when you get involved with those, sometimes <laughs> they don't even try to direct your brain and, you know, you're you're in their circle you know what i mean you're in their thing so i always wanted to be a person that thinks for himself and um creating areas and environments for yourself or for me at the time um kind of helped me on my journey and um of course you still have problems and decide that you want to be a part of other things but for the most part 
um, it was a process and I kind of just felt bad at some points because some people don't want you to be a part of their situation, but you create your own. So I'm on a journey right now as we speak to create environment for me. I've been through a tremendous amount of things in my life and um, to finally be um, at a healed place, a place where I'm okay with what life is. Um, It's not always been great, but I'm here, I'm loving life, and I'm kind of processing through it and getting to it on my own terms. So you got to create that environment for yourself. Yeah, absolutely. Well, you, on that note, and, and that ties in quite nicely to where you, we can explain, you can explain now to the viewers of what you are doing, but what lanes and what atmospheres have you created for yourself? Mm-hmm. Safe spaces, the people that I have around me, um, um, my headspace, my perspective is clear. I'm okay with me. Those are the lanes that I had to kind of go down. I create um, um, environments around me that are clean and that looks good. I'm, I'm, I love smells and, you know, very um, clean smells. I love fresh smells. I love rooms that really look good. I love light. I love uh, atmospheres and, and visuals. So those are the type of things that you continually to freeze. And I always talk about love and love is actually an environment that you create. You decide how that looks for you. You create it. I don't want anything around me. That's not going to be loving and not going to be caring. I'm not going to just put that around me. I'm a very calm guy, peaceful guy. And those are the environments. Those are the things that I want to look good. So you put forth those energies and you don't accept anything less. So those are the areas. Those are the things that I put in my way to make sure I'm looking at very pleasant things. I'm hearing pleasant things. And there's a part um, that I've read is out of the heart, the mouth speaks. You know, your heart is going to speak what comes out of your mouth. So way deep down in the midst of your soul, that thing is going to come out. So I want my soul to speak positive energies, uh, great essences. So I want to smell good things. I want to see good things. I want to experience good things. So those things come up over time. You mature into those levels and life is the best teacher. And for me, you know, that was, that's what it was. That's what it is too. (laughs) <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. And, you know, I know we're going to get deep into your story and your journey shortly. Yeah. But before we do, I think we should probably, if people, if people are watching on, an, um, mm-hmm. on Spotify and YouTube, uh, you can, if you can see into his studio, um, uh, people are probably wondering what on earth do you do? It, yeah. For those who, especially in Australia, I mean, um, yeah. as well, I'm obviously in Australia, but that's not so I keep saying the word obviously it's not obvious I'm in Australia I've got an English accent I am from mm. England mm-hmm. but, uh, mm-hmm. <laughs> tell everybody what you do Kenny mm. I do everything audio I do everything from writing music to creating music to processing music to uh engineering music um I've I've done stuff from actually creating songs for people for myself I do um I do jingles I do yeah you know, music for movies, music for commercials. So anything music, anything audio, I consciously speak. I consciously have kind of perspectives. Um, I love to have conversations, deep conversations that open up the intellect of people. I just love those sorts. So, you know, in a nutshell, everything audio, (laughs) I'm getting into video and visuals and all that sort of stuff. And, um, everything so i can take my studio down i can put it back up um i fix keyboards um i'm a technician at heart um i know actually how to dig in things and solder electronic boards i know how to read schematics i know how to do all that sort of things those are some of the things that i learned over the years and i love it that's just my my passion and my thing yeah, amazing. Yeah. Well, um, people should probably type into Spotify and uh, <laughs> Apple Music and all yeah. of that. And you know, I'm going to go with this yeah, because yeah. we should talk about it. Um, yeah. Uh, uh, since we, well, just, uh, it's, actually, before we do, on that note of uh, intellectual conversations, we spoke what two weeks ago mm-hmm. for the first time, mm-hmm. and I think we spoke for two Ooh. hours. Yes. Yeah. It was a long we had time. Such a good conversation. Yeah, 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 yeah. It was a great conversation. 
and I enjoyed it. And those are the type of conversations that's going to feed you mentally. Yeah. You know, you can't feed yourself junk and think that's, you know, you know, health is going to come out of it. So you have to be around people like yourself, Andrew, you know, you know, to kind of have perspective conversation and talk. And that that's, I believe, how relationships start. That's yeah. how um, friendships start. Meaningful, healthy friendships. You know what I mean? So. I'm not talking about anybody that drank alcohol. I'm not worried about it. I mean, if that's what you do, that's what you do. That's fine. Yeah. But I try, I tend to want to kind of have conversations that's going to help build me because those things are going to help me stand and stand strong. They're healthy and we can have fun, of course. Yeah. You yeah. Know, go out and have a couple of beers or something. That's not a big deal. But for the most part, you know, having connections and people that you can go to really make a difference. So that conversation we had for almost for a long time it didn't feel like that but you know it's just you got to open up yourself to it and just kind of not shut people off just because of whatever you know what i mean so yeah. i enjoyed it yeah yeah and, and i think that's what the podcast is really all about is is that i live my life of between um the four c's of contentment and the first one the first c i think i've explained this many times but very quickly connect connection contribute um cope and and, and cook mm -hmm. um and we could dive into that at some point, but uh, the first one really is my biggest one is connection. And th that's the reason why I built the podcast. I've, I, I feel like I've always been, I've always been a connection person and people have always joked about it. And I, you know, I get it. It's mm. fine. But there's times in my life I feel like I've probably been squashed because of my talkative soul, my talkative energy. And, yeah. you know, sometimes it lands me into trouble, whatever. But mm. I thought this is a great space to create. Um, where I can meet people like yourself and mm. all the other amazing guests and share amazing journeys of, uh, you know, coming from adversity and triumphing and giving something back to the world. I feel like the podcast connects to those four C's, um, yeah. you know, of contribution and, and connection. So right. I think, and we're, we're, we're from the tribes, right? You know, we want to connect even the most mm. introvert people on the planet. Right. Steep, deep, deep down still want to connect on some level, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right? You know? Yeah, absolutely. It's important to me. Um, I'll, I'll write my songs all the time. Love is all we need. You know, love is yeah. all we need. Um, is a song that was built out of that sort of vibe. Mm. This world is so divided. I'm not talking <laughs> the country. It's just so divided in many things. And, um, I can appreciate what people do that do them with a level of, of health, you know, of, yeah. of, of good, you know, that word love, if if we could just open it up, define it and use it a, as a way to help people progress and get better in their life, regardless of what area they are. I don't care what your ethnic background is. I don't care what your sexual preference is. I don't care what your financial status is, whatever it is. If we could replace all the differences in our life with that word love, I don't care how you look. I don't care. Forget whatever. Just a, the human race as a human being. How should I put that out? Yeah. Those, you know, your podcast and what you do and your perspective, how I write my music, all positive, putting back in the earth, positive energies. Those are the things that's going to help mend those areas that that aren't so good right now. So mm -hmm. um, hopefully that the gifts that we have, uh, you know, individually and, and, and together, we come together and still kind of put that out. Th that's what I think we should be going towards. So many things happening in the media. Pay attention. You see, so many things that happen in the media. You would have to think it, it couldn't have been because they loved it. Maybe they loved mm -hmm. the wrong way. Who knows? I don't know. But it's just weird. Everybody needs that. And um, hopefully my music, your podcast, my mind, your mind coming together and can help and hopefully it'll catch on like, like dominoes or wildfire. I don't know. Hopefully it does. Yeah. And it will for sure. Yeah. Um, on the top of your topic of your music, then let's yeah. talk about your vibe and let's talk about mm. your energy and the, the topics mm. and the words that are in your songs. Cause it's, it's, um, well, yeah, who can, it, if somebody was going to turn on your music, uh, I had it blasting out the other week, uh, the mm -hmm. most recent song you were on. Yeah. I know I've actually shared it on uh, stories as well. Mm -hmm. And a, a different version came up on on on, mm -hmm. app, um, on Instagram. And I really liked that version. But I looked on Apple and I couldn't find that version of You're, You're a Woman. 
Mm-hmm. I, I like, don't know. I don't know what that. I had a version on your woman, the original version, and then I did one kind of like a live version on that's what Back it was. to Rhythm and Love. Back to Rhythm and Love. I did another version on Back to Rhythm and Love. Yeah. So both of them are there. You just gotta. Find, I don't know why it's not like that, but you know they're both there. Yeah. Um, one of them gives um, a more direct. It was the single, um, and another one was an album version or, or EP version that I put out. Just kind of gives it a different vibe. When yeah. I go, when I do shows, more or less, that live vibe is kind of what that that room needs. You know, sometimes the you know the the single is a little different. It's just basically the only thing that's different is probably some hits. My vocals are different, a little extra added things, and I did a live drums on it, and um, that's what kind of gave it that feel. But those songs are basically just kind of empowering women. You know, so many, so many, so many different times. Look at the news. Look at what's going on. Not going to mention anything going on, but you can just look at the news. Just the lack of respect for women is something that's very much so lacking. Our music industry, it's absolutely taking a huge hit. And I mean, let me tell you something. It's nothing new. This has been going on for so long. And I've never been a, a disrespectful singer or just been disrespectful in those sorts of ways. Um, for me as an artist to look at it and just put the essence of love back into R&B, back into my artistry, that's what I think I'm gifted to do. Mm -hmm. um, everybody, again, we say this, and I said this at the top of the show, about choosing, regardless of what your environment is, whatever that is, you have to choose how you want to live your life. You have to choose how you want your artistry and your gift to be used on this earth. And I am not going to be a main character in being disrespectful to women, not because it's going to get me in trouble to some degree, but because it's the right thing to do. Mm -hmm. Because you wouldn't want your daughter, you wouldn't want your son out there doing any of that, and you don't want your daughter out there being the re on the receiving end of that. So for me, I, I, I don't like to reap anything that... <laughs> that isn't sewn correctly. So if I'm going to sew something, it's going to be something that's going to be sewn back into me. So I'm not going to sew negativity. You're not going to sew uh, uh, disrespect because in many cases, those things come back to you. I'm going to show, I'm going to sew love. I'm going to, I'm going to sew embracing people. And even those people that have been, you know, in the forefront of the media, they need grace too. So who knows what's going on in their head, but, I'm not going to be the main uh, character in the film called Disrespect. Mm -hmm. Just not going to do it. So it's going to be reflective in what I say. It's going to be in respective um, in my music. And that's just how I live my life. Your woman um, was written on from that perspective. Yeah. I'm championing women. I'm, I'm empowering them from a male's perspective. Let's put out there in the world that I see your smiling face. I, <laughs> Thank you for all that you do. You, you're a child bearer. You, you introduce, you know, children into this world, human rights, everything that you guys are responsible for. I wanted to champion that. And um, I, hopefully it became resident. And we can see in media right now, um, it, it should have been a song that, that became absolutely will come become number one. I'm not worried about that. That song will become something that's going to be played for a long time. So I'm championing women. Um, I can't say I love all women, but I I love the essence of that. Yes, because that that is where it is, and I'm going to support them. I'm going to empower them with what my music says, and and, and I'm happy with that. I'm very comfortable with it. Yeah. So you're you're a woman came out on March 8th of this year. Mm -hmm. Is that right? Yep, March yep. 8th, International yep. Women's Women Day. Um, yeah. We decided, didn't know that it was going to be that song. Didn't know that we was going to, that song was initially was supposed to be done by a female. But I uh, kind of just said, hmm, maybe I should do this. I kind of got a, a different spin on it. And I just said, let me, when I did the, the reference track, um, my vocal was on it. Um, and then female was just going to kind of put her spin on it. I was like, yeah, I think I like this. I may put this out myself. I didn't see any uh, any artists. Maybe they have, but I hadn't seen any of, from my research of anybody putting anything out championing women. I didn't know that March 8th, 8th was Women International Women's Day. My yeah. PR, Katrina Hertz, um, said, you know that's International Women's Day. I was like, no, I didn't know that. I said, hmm, 
must be something about that. Just let's just move in that direction. And when I was moving that there is perfect timing, perfect timing. Um, uh, it was just something that I felt very, very good about. And, um, so many great reviews on it. And, um, I sang it and performed it and did it on news channels and, um, performed it live and all sorts of different things. And it's definitely, uh, uh, was something, um, that I enjoyed and I continue to do. On that note, you brought mm-hmm. up uh, you've done it on some TV channels, and I've mm-hmm. got a picture here. <laughs> I don't. It, it, is that where you sang "You're a Woman," or is that a different it, song? No, I sang "You're a Woman." At the backdrop there, you see the that record cover. The, the yeah, because I've got that one here as well. Yeah, another picture that I'm going to bring you, up. Yeah, that's "You're a Woman." That is it. That is yes. absolutely it. Yep, "You're a Woman." I'll, I'll flip them onto the screen so people can <laughs> see them on the full. What amazing! Yeah, yeah, yeah. Beautiful, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. And it, uh, this is when I first came across you. Um, when your PR um, got in touch with me, this is what I first saw. Mm-hmm. That this was from I just, magazine. This just, I just, just, I don't know. It just brought back like um, it brought kind of like back my early, later, <laughs> early adulthood vibe to me. You know, growing uh-huh. up, yeah. listening to the nineties, the noughties. Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. that vibe, that that piano. I've been to Memphis, Tennessee, and I don't know what it was. I just, that kind of connected with me. I know it's, I know you're not from there. Yeah. Um, well, tell everybody where you, where you, where you currently live at the moment. I, I'm in South. I'm in the South. I live in the yeah. South. I've been here for, since 2009. Um, my late bride um, and two and our children moved uh, 2009 into the late South. We was in Jersey at that point. I was born and raised there. Needed a different vibe. Always, always back to environment. Always trying to get into a peaceful place. At that time, Jersey wasn't all that peaceful to me, and I needed to kind of get out of Dodge. To kind when of you say Jersey, do you mean New Jersey? New Jersey, yes, ma'am. Yes, yep. sir. New Jersey yep. was where it was. Um, born and raised in New Jersey, Englewood particularly. Um, grew up in the eighties, um, and um, everybody knows what happens in the eighties. You know, it was like a weird, weird time. And um, learned a lot, experienced a lot, and got married and, you know, came. I stayed there for a little bit. I got married in 2002, and we moved here in 2009 and been here ever since. So, yeah. Because, you know, New, I've been going to New York since 2000. And mm-hmm. obviously New Jersey's real close to oh, Manhattan. Yeah. Oh, pretty, yeah. Pretty close. How, how yeah. far from Manhattan would you have been? Mm, maybe 15 minutes. Oh, yeah. Maybe. I mean... You, you, from anyone who's not been to the States, if you've grown up in my, our era, you know, watching the movies, all you see is, you know, Queens, the Bronx, mm-hmm. uh, Manhattan, and mm-hmm. how dangerous places like New York. My my dad actually used to do business in Trenton. Ooh. Oh, yeah. That's the capital of Jersey. Yeah. Oh, is that the capital? Yeah. yeah okay. Trenton is. He used to he used to go there doing his um he had a a clothing company and he used mm-hmm. to go to it was called a brie back in the day mm-hmm. doesn't do it anymore but he used mm-hmm. to go to Trenton all the time and he used to tell me some of the stories he would see and I'm like whoa I want to go <laughs> yeah no you don't no <laughs> <laughs> no you don't <laughs> so what was uh, childhood like for you in the eighties then uh, uh, is it like the movies or um the movies depicted. Yeah, a, a good amount of things that you that I can kind of ascribe to. Absolutely, the eighties was full of um, drugs. the The eighties seemed to have been um, the inner city was taken advantage of at that point. Um, the eighties were filled with so many different things, and you know, the poverty we had mm-hmm. drug addiction. Um, Join us tomorrow to hear more from today's incredible guests and learn valuable insights to help you lead your own way. Don't forget to subscribe. We'll see you then.